Home run and the isotopes go up three to two. Welcome to the end of the world with Last of Us Remastered. The game that shambled forth from 2013 as the pretty much de facto industry leader in Game of the Year awards until Witcher 3 came along, I think. But nonetheless remains a bar setter for what a lot of people think first person linear storytelling should look like. At this point, he's just loading his toenails into his gun. And I'm one of them. Obviously, there are a lot of ways to tell stories, and yeah. irrational yeah. games, for instance, might have something to say when it comes to storytelling. But with a third-person, over-the-shoulder adventure game, I guess you can call it action-adventure, like this, The Last of Us has left an indelible just communicative impact across the entire industry, even infecting the likes of God of War with clear influences, especially with its greatest addition in my mind, which is the quiet moment. This was the green light to include quiet moments in your single player experiences, and it really let everything breathe. It let you develop characters that are relatable or just feel more human, which of course makes characters like Tess and the Firefly leader feel more dangerous or in danger as the case may be and as survivors despite their status in the world well time to make that gatling gun i could use joe and ellie are under the spotlight the most and they come out as the absolute shining masterpieces in character design that this game will be known for for years to come because you get to see their arcs and smooth rounded domes as opposed to just a triangle up and then a triangle side back down and up oh, there's your arc Ellie, get down! My asshole alarm is going crazy! Gameplay is where Naughty Dog loses me just a smidge, on top of a disconnect between the character design of the fungal enemies. Joel lines up the shot, he steadies, he reads the wind, and then he lets it fly, AND A WORLD RECORD SHOT! The gunplay is very well done, I feel like, but it's the in-between sections, it's the exploration, the press triangle to do anything, the still hanging on a little bit to the quick time events. That's what just creates a grinding effect on repeat playthroughs. All right, Ellie, we're gonna craft the most painful grenade imaginable, because that's totes what heroes do. And then you have basically the fungal mascot clickers, which I found to be really, really simple to defeat, and that just completely undermined them early in the experience. Take this, people looking for the latest John Grisham novel! So while there are some chunks in this milky stew, that does not take away from the absolute bravery Naughty Dog had with this story. This story had everything going against it. This was a time in the industry where everything was multiplayer, everything was behind online passes, and they came out and nailed this. That on top of the included DLC and the multiplayer, which is nowhere near the tacked on mess that a lot of other multiplayer games are, gives this a 10 out of 10. It raises the single player game up for me from a 9 out of 10. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I'll see you next time in another post-apocalyptic world, I'm sure. Bye-bye.